here. This is a, there's a tribute to all um, soldiers everywhere coming. Yeah, it's just uh, you know mis uh, missing home, and uh, uh, I have a great story about that particular song. There was a, uh, a gentleman uh, deployed to Afghanistan, and unbeknownst to me, it was uh, his and his his fiance's tune. And her deployment gift for him was a, a gold watch with some of my lyrics inscribed in it. So I got the the email from the family saying this was his deployment, you know. And uh, there's tears streaming down my face while I'm having my breakfast, and my wife runs it. What's wrong? So just read this. It's wow, so beautiful. <laughs> that is that is incredible. Um, uh, they last performed in um, 1955. Do you know who that was? Yeah, well, they did. They actually did a few things after that too, but they were, you know, at that point, a lot of them had passed away. So there mm -hmm. was there was only a few left. Uh, Lambert Lodge was uh, was their last real sort of large performance, and I think they had five or six of them left at that point. And that was the mid seventies. And at at their at their prime, how many were there? That's a good question. They. Uh, See, because they cherry-picked from the other concert parties at the end of the First World War, their, their numbers sort of went up and down. But I, I would say on the full strength, there were 24 around there. Mm -hmm. Although, you know, Ted, after I wrote the book, um, I, I'm getting all these emails from hundreds of people who say that their grandfather was in the, uh, the dumbbells, and which wouldn't put their numbers at about 460. Right. So uh, I uh, don't actually believe every claim. But <laughs> That's okay. If you remember the op opening, uh, the first day the Jays played down at Exhibition Stadium, if you uh, counted everybody who said they were there, there was 1.3 million. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> 1. I remember it well. <laughs> 3 million people attended that game, so these numbers get to, uh, they're enhanced, yes. just, so to speak. Uh, this sounds to me like a, like a great idea for film. Well, we're toying with that idea. We, we want to get this show going first. Um, yeah. And, uh, and then play it by ear. But no, there, there is a filmmaker very much interested, and he's actually going to be filming the show. So uh, This is at Hugh's room. What, what's the date on that? June 15th. Uh, June 15th. And, and so the, the, the comedy that goes on in here, is it based on all old comedy scripts? Absolutely. So we're, we're going to do, do a couple of sketches uh, right out of the Dumbbells book, and uh, the rest of it will uh, be some of the songs reimagined to the best of our you know, 21st century sensibilities that we can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, go back. Well, there's and, nobody around anymore to challenge you. Well, that's right. So uh, <laughs> it takes the pressure And the off. instrumentation. What would the instrumentation So be? what we're going to do, Bill, is we're doing uh, clarinet, coronet, okay. piano, accordion. And uh, we were thinking about a tuba. It's a little late in the game to add that. But, but that's kind of the sound. That there kind of brass, brass kind of sound. It's a turn of the century. Sally Ann sort of sound in a yeah, way. Yeah. yeah. So... Um, so we're keeping it to that. There, you know, there'll be no electric yeah. bass and drums, which we're used to. So you have to grab our, our most famous sousaphone player, Rob Tehan, who showed up with a thousand bands. He was like the only guy that played tuba. Oh yeah, he's nice. a young, young guy. <laughs> plays in, plays in all these young bands. Fantastic. Our show with uh, three different bands, I yeah. think. Yeah, this is really uh, quite quite a fascinating part of of, of Canadian history. I'm, most of us have never heard of it, mm. never been taught about this in school. But then, you know, I, um, without getting too uh, picky, I don't think that we teach enough Canadian history to begin with. Oh, you're preaching to the choir in this chair. And now, I, did, did, did they play vaudeville houses too? Yes, yeah. They, they, they had, even in, in London, they had some successes and played, uh, uh, you put me on the spot here, but I think like The Empire and uh, there was another vaudeville uh, theater that they ran for weeks in in London, England, right. while they were over there. So, no, uh, they uh, they were the real deal. They were the real deal. How many people in in, in the presentation June fifteenth? Two, three, four, five. So three musicians, including myself, two actors, and of course Lauren Brown, who's a very gifted storyteller. And Lauren's got a special connection to the Dumbbells because his father actually worked for the Dumbbells during their Canadian tours uh, in the nineteen twenties. So. It's, it's really close to his heart, and he's just delighted that I finished well, this book. And What kind of an audience are you expecting to get? <laughs> That's a really, <laughs> really good question. I have no idea. Um, I'm expecting some of our people that are used to my, you know, my other reggae world uh, coming out out of curiosity's sake. Um, but also, I feel that you know, it appeals to anyone with that affinity for Canadiana. Uh, um, might might come out, um, and certainly some military people will come out and probably talk yeah. about tanks and that kind of thing with me after the show. But.